Hey guys, welcome to the 2021 Automotive Photography Lightroom Editing Tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can get a photo like this from a photo like this. Alright, so this edit was done on a bracketed photo. I shot one underexposed, one mid-exposed, and then one overexposed which I find when you do something like that, especially with a midday photo, you're able to preserve a lot of the details. And so it, it, it saves you in the edit and it's really easier to play with. So first thing I did after merging them using the HDR was I went in to do some basic edits, basic adjustments to the light exposure, shadows and highlights. I usually tend to take the vibrance down lower and then boost up the saturation and add a little bit of clarity knowing that I'm going to add more clarity at the end of the photo in the radio filter. Um, hopping down, I, I sometimes tend to do the HSL or I'll do the calibration. But the way that I edit photos is usually realistic to the way that you would have actually seen it if you had been there behind the lens or just on the set. It's very realistic. I, I don't try to make it look anything that it isn't. I'm not trying to make a blue sky into a teal or to aqua, something like that. Like it, It's very realistic, and that's the way I go. So when it comes to saturation, I'm boosting it up. Hue, I'm usually leaving it alone unless I'm trying to absolutely make sure that I get the right paint color and then the luminance I'm just using that to make to also help with the exposure of different areas so for instance in this photo a lot of it is coming from yellow and orange so that's what I'll use to play around in the split toning usually do the same thing with every photo shadows I'm going to go to blues highlights I'm going to go to yellows or oranges and that's typically the way I go this, the um, the values I put for that is usually about 10 to 15, nothing too high. In the calibration, this is where you kind of have to just play with it yourself. You know, no photo is going to be the same. You just got to take it to two extremes. So what I do is with the hue, I roll it to the far left, far right, and I just see where it, where it affects the photo and where I'm going to let that kind of sit. And do that the same thing with the greens the reds all the same again just trying to find that perfect balance how it can edit the photo but also make it still look very realistic to the editing style that I like now I'm gonna go back up to HSL probably just you know see where I'm at go before and after saturations up luminance just playing with the oranges and yellows so you can see in the background in the background there's going to be a lot of crops and stuff but right now it's in a dead season so it's all turned to you know dead grass dead whatever so it turns into a yellow so i just play with that and same thing with in front it's more of like a gravel road it's not like a cement road so it's kind of like in a yellow so I play with that too. Um, all the while I'm, I'm I'm trying to make sure that the SVJ in the background, which has a distinct yellow, and most people that know about these cars, is that the paint option on these costs over twenty thousand dollars. So you want to get it accurate so that the owner of this car who's seeing this photo is like, yeah, that's my car that I paid twenty thousand dollars for, and not some you know, dinky edit that you ended up doing and thinking, oh yeah, this, this color looks better. You know what I mean? Anyway, so now I take the Ova filter, I put it over the car that I'm trying to establish in the photo, which obviously is the one dead center, the Demon Viper here. Usually just touch up and make the sharpness higher, the clarity higher. I'm looking at it. I'm seeing that on the side of the car, there's a lot of like kickback on it. It could be like rock chips or whatever, 
but also this car was right behind the SVJ as we were just driving it around. So this could be just from all the kickback from the tire on the road. So I'm just going to take the clone and the heel tool, go over the spots. I'm going to make the circle a little small just to cover the areas, not cover a huge amount of area at once. That's lazy. Stop that. Just do it like I do. And it's going to automatically do it for you, right? So you can be lazy with it. Just make sure that it's pulling from the right area. Not somewhere you don't want. There's not a whole lot to touch up on here. It was already detailed before the shoot, which is important. If you're if you're shooting a dirty car, don't even bother. You're gonna spend way too much time editing it. Just go home. Back it up. So something else I'm noticing is that the right now I'm doing a voiceover, but anyways, I see that the that the Viper logo, it's it's looking kind of yellow and it's supposed to be a red so when I go back and edit this I'm I'm, I'm gonna want to make sure it's a red and not a yellow because that's gonna be a dead giveaway to anybody who knows this car some people who don't you'll probably just squeeze right by but you know for the owner who you're trying to make sure really enjoys these photos maybe one day wants to print them off doesn't see like oh yeah why is that yellow anyways so yeah touch it up there now I'm looking at the before I'm like oh sh look at that red yellow red yellow god damn but that's an easy fix because when you shoot bracketed you have this as underexposed so you can bring that back so I'm just gonna reduce the exposure on the mid stripe right there that's a little bit good. I'm going to do it even a little bit more. Just drop that even more. That's good. But now, I the oval filter is doing a bit more areas that I don't need it to do. So what I usually do is I go into the brush of the same, same oval path that I just did. I'm going to take the brush and then I'm going to just erase the areas that I don't need it affecting. So I don't need it right over there on the grill a bit. Look right underneath. No, take that out. Take it out on the sides. On top. Yeah, we're good now. That's looking a lot better. So that's all I need. Take it off. Done. Nice. I like this a lot more. And yeah, you can see the before and after I, I I usually like to flick that on a few times bring down the exposure or the highlights highlights are sometimes better to use I don't know why I did exposure here but I probably should have done just the highlights um, in the forefront which helps to dial it in and then again you can do the brush over top of the car take that out now the car is going to be popping a whole lot more if you're not doing this to your photos, you're lacking. You should be doing it. Don't be lazy. Anyways, this is about almost the final edit. But I think if I were to edit this a bit more, I probably would have made the blues in the sky a little bit more. Oh, what I'm doing right now is actually I found that there are some spots on my CPL filter and it actually transferred into the photo at the end so I'm just like quickly doing this clone stamp tool fixing that again and yeah this is the final edit looks good it was a little bit of a busy picture but that's the way I liked it it's the way it was at the scene and that's the way I'm gonna keep it uh, let me know down below if there's any questions you had about my edit and how I can teach you a little bit more about something definitely be interested in doing that if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing, and uh, thanks. See you in the next one.